when rich kids go skint. 21-year-old entrepreneur Susanna from Kensington has left her jet-set lifestyle and designer handbags behind. This entire collection would probably be worth around £10,000. To learn about those who haven't had the privileged head start in life that she has. Susanna. Nice to meet you, Leah. Nice to meet you. Ben. Hi. Come on through. So, this is our lounge. This is where we'll just chill, watch telly, um, just breathe after a nice long day at work. Uh, my lounge would be twice as big as this room. Really? Where is yes. it you live? Uh, I live in South Kensington. Oh, wow. So, this is our kitchen. Do you cook a lot at home? I try finding time for it whenever I can, but I'm a person who often also like neglects eating at all. So I don't really make much use of that space. Do you eat out a lot being in London? Three times a week. Wow. Ben, do you cook? Sorry. Yeah, more than you. Really? <laughs> yeah. So what do you usually cook? It depends what we've got in the cupboards and the fridge, but mm. if there's anything edible, chances are I can cook it and make a meal out of it. No doubt Ben can pass a few of his cooking skills on to rich kid Susanna. So this is my bedroom. I don't really spend much time in here other than sleeping. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, how many rooms have you got where you live in? Um, it's three rooms. It's with my friends. This is Ben's room and Finn the dog, you haven't met him yet. We've got a puppy, oh, nice. but he's a big puppy, he's Nikita, so he's only seven months old. Beautiful. Can't wait to meet him. Yeah. He's gorgeous. <laughs> I absolutely love dogs. She might not love her new living arrangements as much. So this is where you're going to be sleeping. I um, hope that's all right with you. Have you slept on a couch before? Yes, thank you. Yeah, obviously it's not going to be as sort of upmarket and as nice as her place in Kensington. Um, but she's seen she's she's just a flat share, so um, I think she's going to be used to spending time with other people and stuff. So um, it, should, it should be fine. Time will tell. With her new guest settled in, Leah has lots of questions about what it's like to have a running start in life. So does your business support yourself completely or yes. do you have any help? Yes, it does. It does. Did you have any family support financially in setting up the business? Yes, definitely by my grandfather. He is an entrepreneur himself. So it's nice to know, you know, that I have this person who's there to always give me support, like both mental and financial. So obviously you're at a stage now where you're like happily financially comfortable. Mm. What, what do you spend your money on? What do you treat yourself on? Traveling. That's definitely something that I'm totally addicted to. How often do you go traveling? Last year, um, I counted and I was on a plane 45 times. Wow. <laughs> That's really like, I just want one holiday this year. Just one. But it wasn't a holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I went for one vacation. It was in, in September. It was in Spain. If you go out for a night out with your friends, like what, what's your sort of budget? Or what are you spending? When we're going out, it would probably be around £100, £150. Right. What's the most expensive thing you own? I am doing makeup artist stuff sometimes, or I provide makeup artists with my cosmetics, so that's probably what I spent most of my money on. Then the bag collection, maybe. Yeah. I have treated myself to a few bags. What's the total like value of your bag collection? It's probably around ten thousand pounds. Wow. <laughs> I'd need. I could get a new car for that. <laughs> I know you could. Hearing how Susanna's able to shower herself in money, Leah wants her to realise how tough things can be when you're not born into wealth. You're literally robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. I've had to borrow money off Ben before just to put gas and electric on. We're in a situation, Ben's only 16, so I, even though he's earning money, but it's only an apprenticeship wage. Okay. And it's, so I don't want to charge him rent. What does he do? So, he's um, a marine engineer apprentice. Wow. And he's also at college doing engineering and welding. Mm -hmm. So I think if I was Smart to take boy. half the money off him, I'd discourage him and he'd be like, why am I doing this? So I want right. to give him that, that step on the ladder, but it just makes things really hard. I imagine it must be horrible to come to a point where you have to ask your teenage son to, to borrow your money just to make a living. I, I hope I never find myself in this situation. So tell me a little more about yourself. What do you do? Um, I do all sorts of jobs. Mainly I'm a fitness instructor. Um, okay. I work in children's care homes. I do um, boxing, hostessing, receptionist, part-time modelling, literally everything. So after you pay off all the bills, what's really left in your budget? 
That, you know, that's the hardest bit, is being self-employed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you get a, like three paychecks all at once and it looks like you've got money, but then you don't know when the next one's coming. So you have to keep some aside. But then there's also very often times where I've literally got nothing, but I need to get the train to Birmingham to go to work. I need to put petrol in the car. The car insurance is due. And I'm then having to like borrow your house? Is it your property or is it rented? No, it's rented at the moment. Um, so a few years back I had my own house, um, which was great, but I sort of got into a bit of a vicious cycle with money, you know, where you get those like rip off payday loans and things like that and just things sort of got on top of me. And then when you're working and you're so busy, you forget to pay something. And um, I got myself into some debt as well, which is why um, we're in rented at the moment. So I sold the house. I can only imagine myself in such a situation, I would be so stressed out because obviously she has a son she has to provide for, she has a house, she has to pay the bills, she has a car, she needs to get to the locations of her job, so, I mean, that must be very tough. When rich kids go skint. Susanna's used to splashing the cash at many of Knightsbridge's swanky cocktail bars, but tonight, Leah's keen for Susanna to see how her nights out on the town can cost her next to nothing. Very often I'm the duty driver. I get a wristband, which is a designated driver wristband, and all my soft drinks are free all night, so I don't even have to spend any money unless I choose to. So I suppose it's like to promote responsible oh, yeah. drinking, really. Um, I think that's really good but because like at least you get to socialize with your friends as well otherwise yeah. you're only working 16 hours a day. I know yeah work sleep eat <laughs> repeat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so let's say you're actually drinking on a night out how much how much is a drink? You could get two double vodkas two cans of energy drink for seven pounds. If you go out on student night you can get sort of a gin and tonic for £1.50. What? <laughs> gin and tonic at a place that we go to pretty frequently is £15. Like one glass of just a single gin and tonic. Leah's taking Susanna out to a nightclub in Stafford Town Centre, where she's meeting up with a few of her mates. This is a very new experience for me. Um, I saw a bit of the club and it seems nice. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'm, I really am not a club person. A Stafford nightclub may not measure up to the high-class establishment Susanna's used to. But it's not long before she's embracing the joys of a cheap night out. Here's to Susanna's first night out in Stafford. Cheers. Cheers. Leah's mates are eager to hear all about Susanna's posh nights out in Knightsbridge. Where's your favourite place to eat in London? So there is like Daphne's or Scalini, which are usually around Knightsbridge, and when we go out to eat, it's probably around maybe a hundred mm. pounds per person. Oh my life! The yeah, bill. so the bill comes up pretty high. Yeah. I'm like very annoyed with myself if I spend seventy pounds like, on a night out, and that that's including food, free drinks at someone's house, coming out to the club, probably a few bars before we go to the club. To be honest, I feel like right now I'm just at a point where I can afford to, you know, live the way I want to live and kind of I can afford the things that I need and want. The jet set lifestyle soon has them aghast. Last year I was on a plane 45 times within 52 weeks. <gasps> oh my life. What sort of thing do you go for when you stay abroad? What I love to go for is kind of designer boutique hotels like smaller things that look really nice. And just wait till you hear the price. I would say an average is about two, three hundred pounds. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> <amazing. laughs> That's a lot. It what is. do we pay for a hotel for a night? Me, I'd pay for a Premier Inn. Have you heard of Premier Inn? Yeah. I'd literally <laughs> pay like 20 pounds for a cheap bed That's to stay good. in a hotel and then come home the next day. may not come naturally to Susanna, but Leah's shown her that it's possible to have a fun night out without breaking the bank. It came a little unexpected that Leah said that she could go out and have a fun night for um, 10 pounds, like the whole night. I'm used to, you know, London prices. So where we usually go around Knightsbridge for drinks, it's usually around like a meal with maybe a couple of drinks, 100 pounds per person easily and to see that it, there really is such a huge gap, that's, that's quite unexpected.